welcome back to the valuation course. I'm Nisha Kohli from Nishwin Consulting. I'm taking Tiger Airways acquisition case study as an example for the income based approach which I discussed in my last video. Tiger Airways started its operations in the year 2004 and it's a Singapore it was a Singapore listed company. Singapore Airlines had some stakes in Tiger Airways which rose to about 55.8% in the year 2014. Tiger Airways had huge over capacity and it had earned bad reputation for its delays and cancellations of the flight which had translated into huge losses for a continuous period of 4 years and in 2015 the losses amounted to 264 million dollars In January 2016 Singapore Airlines intended to buy Tiger Airways completely Now to buy Tiger Airways it had to acquire at least 90% stake in the company which it had only 78%. Initially they offered 41 cents per share which they increased to 45 cents per share in January 2016. Now this offer of 45 cents per share was at a 45% premium over the market price of 31 cents per share. the question was whether it was a reasonable price should the minority shareholders accept the latest offer of 45 cents per share or should they wait keep holding the share which had resulted in an average price over a long term period of 67 cents per share should the share valuation take into account synergies that might result from the acquisition should minority shareholders exercise their right to buy singapore airlines shares at 11 dollars per share now since this is a case of acquisition let's first look at the swot analysis so let's look at the strengths and weaknesses of tiger airways internally now tiger airways had a large customer base and it was in the low cost domestic market if for a, for a number of years so it had gained experience and exposure and it had a good business model to do this kind this airline business in the low low cost segment so it was a good bet for singapore airlines if it acquired sing tiger airways it will get a it will get a good large customer base however the, there were certain weaknesses with tiger airways the reputation was affected due to delays and cancellation and especially in australia they had problems with the australian authority so that bad reputation could have had a spillover re- effect in singapore market as well now let's look at the opportunities and threats the threats facing tiger airways include all uncertain oil prices and natural events Now it's noted that despite the possibility to hedge against the price risk of the oil through its experience it would be hard to completely eliminate those risks. Now being able to mitigate the risk of price fluctuation will enable prices to be more competitive. For Singapore Airlines acquisition of partly owned subsidiary will allow them to enter into low cost airline segment. If we talk about threats the variation of the oil prices might affect the operating cost of the airline the natural events of of course they will stand there as the threat to all the airlines and the competitors might try to take advantage of the spread the prejudicial news against tiger air brand now if we analyze the porter's five forces the bargaining power of suppliers there are two major air suppliers of the aircrafts in the world that's boeing and airbus the bargaining power of the suppliers in this industry is low now this is primarily due to the intense competition between the two companies this significantly increases the power of the airlines for negotiations if we look at the rivalry among competing firm there's intense rivalry among the airline companies and especially in the low cost um, airline sector The threat of substitute products in this industry is low. Flight is the quickest and the most convenient way to get to another country. While tra- traveling by land or sea is also possible, but it is inconvenient and takes more time. Bargaining power of buyers in this market, bargaining power of buyers is quite high because the switching costs are very low. There are various options available and the prices are also very competitive. 
The barriers to entry in this industry is high. However, airline sector is quite a mature sector and even low cost airlines have been there for uh, more than two decades now. Already there are too many competitors and players in this market, but the advantage with Singapore Airline is its brand name. It's regarded as for its superior services. If you look at the Pestle analysis, both the companies did not face any political or economical risks because they both were listed in the same country, Singapore. Socially, the social factor was very positive for Singapore Airlines and the merger and acquisition. Singaporeans have an emotional connect with Singapore Airlines. Tiger Airways acquisition by Singapore Airlines will pass that benefit to Tiger Airways also. When we look at the technological factor, there will be improvements in the Tiger Airways by Singapore Airlines because Singapore Airlines have got a good technological capability. Tiger Airways might benefit from the artificial intelligence or machine learning technologies to improve their service. That means that there will be some investment in this area. Environmentally also there were no significant risk and legally Tiger Airways will become even more stronger to face the legal, you know, to manage its legal aspects. Now let's look at the benefits of acquisition for Tiger Airways as well as for Singapore Airlines. So for Tiger Airways, there will be more efficient transfer of expertise and brand name. There will be gold congruence. There can be joint loyalty program and improving their reputation by providing more customer safety, fixing the governance issues and, you know, the problems of delays and cancellations could also be fixed by getting transferred to Singapore Airlines. This acquisition will bring more market power and more customer base to Singapore Airlines. So overall, with a strategic analysis, we can conclude that uh, the analysts cannot take very high optimistic growth projections because uh, the bargaining powers of consumers is very high and there are too many players already existing in the market. Next, let's look at the financial analysis. Now, to do financial analysis, we need to source the past historical financial statements. Since the acquisition happened in the year 2016, so we have taken data from 2010 to 2015. So this is the income statement. Then we convert that income statement to the common size income statement, which is converting all the lines uh, of the income statement as a percentage of sales. Then we do the horizontal analysis, year on year change for these five years. And then we try to take the average to see how it has, the figures have changed. Next is the balance sheet, the asset side, equity and liabilities. Now from the balance sheet, we need only a few figures. We need figure for the capital expenditure and we need figure for the changes in working capital, the inventory, receivables and the payables. So for the PPE, as a, I've taken as a percentage of capital expenditure. The average comes to be, comes out to 92%, but I have, so I've taken it as 67% uh, of the sales. Estimating the revenue growth. Now, for estimating the revenue growth, there are various options. Uh, in the in the previous video, I discussed about uh, two peer, two components of the DCF analysis. One is the explicit period, and the second part is the terminal value. So, for the ex, the growth rate for the explicit period can be based on the projections and the assumptions. Like just now, we did the uh, whole analysis of strategic analysis and the industry analysis so from based on those uh, factors we can we can arrive at our growth assumptions or we can look at the competitors and uh, you know look at their growth rates and assume our own percentage and the third source of growth is the internal financing so how much of the profits are being reinvested and the formula to calculate that is retention ratio times return on equity the second portion that's the terminal terminal value we have to assume a terminal growth rate now that will lead to the perpetual cash flows so we that we can do by doing our own projections or as making you know giving our own assumptions we can use industry sustainable growth rate we can use countries gdp growth rate or even the inflation rate okay so 
now we are done with our analysis now uh, it's a time to project the income statement and the balance sheet so we do line by line assumptions each line of the income statement we have to give an assumption we have to give a story for each line so in tiger airways case study there's the first slide is passenger seat revenue then ancillary revenue then lease rental income and then the costs start like actual fuel cost fuel hedging maintenance cost staff cost etc so for each line by line we will consider the vertical as well as horizontal and the stories that we derive from the industry and strategy analysis to arrive at our assumptions at the percentages that we want to apply to to get the projected income and the balance sheet okay so once our projected income statement and the balance sheet is prepared then we can move on to calculate the free cash flows so free cash flows can be calculated by taking the earning before interest and tax then we reduce the tax to get no pad and uh, please refer to my previous video for the calculation so what I've, I've added the depreciation and amortization then consider the changes in the working capital added the capital expenditure uh, add or less the capital expenditure to give the free cash flow to firm so once we are done with the free cash flow to firm calculations we have to find the terminal value for terminal value calculation we consider the last year free cash flow multiply that with the sustainable growth rate to arrive at the terminal value and uh, we have to divide that by the capitalization rate capitalization <coughs> sorry capitalization rate can be worked out by uh, subtracting the sustainable growth rate from the discount rate discount rate for free cash flow to firm is taken as to taken uh, to be the weighted average cost of capital now for the calculation of weighted average cost of capital i'll be doing another video following this one and once we calculate the terminal value we add the we take out the discounted values of the expected cash flows in the explicit period and the terminal value to arrive at the total form value in this case it is 763540 and then we reduce the debt value from there now remember to reduce the market value of debt we get the implied market capitalization now that implied market capitalization when divided by the number of shares will give us the implied share price so in this case it has come out to be 18 cents while the singapore airline was offering 45 cents per share so if the minority shareholder accept the offer from singapore airlines airlines they will be better off once we arrive at the implied share price, we can also do sensitivity analysis to account for difference of opinion and difference of assumptions because each one of us have different story to tell, different way of thinking. So the assumptions, the stories might be different for individual people. So when we present this in the boardroom, you know, uh, we may have to make certain changes. So it's easier if we do the sensitivity analysis. Thank you.